While many in our nation and around the world are struggling with this pandemic, we believe we serve a mighty, powerful God who is not limited by what seems to be impossible. Although this may not be the format for how we typically worship, it is a gift to have technology that allows us to worship together even if we're not physically in the same place. Because God says that where two or three are gathered, He is in the midst of them. So even during a pandemic, we are going to continue to gather together and worship Him, sing together and pray together. We are so glad you have chosen to join us for worship today. Church, welcome to the new season of Lord Reigns in All Nations Ministry online service. We are so happy to have you join with us today. In this new season, let us continue to observe the following. Be punctual and gather your family members and friends together. Share and start a watch party prior to the planned time of the streaming of online service. Online service should be attended with the same attitude with the physical service. Avoid disruptive activities such as house chores and internet activities. Remember, worship time is a time dedicated to God. Be accountable for each other in the church community by checking up and supporting each other. Feel free to drop a comment, greeting, or prayer request in our comment section box. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Let us always remember that Jesus is the reason for all seasons. He is the reason we exist as a community and why we have a mission to serve the world, pandemic or not. God bless us all.
A blessed afternoon, brethren. As we start our gathering for today, let's begin with praise and thanksgiving to our living God. Let us pray. Father, we want to say thank you for the life of each and every one. Thank you for the hope, faith, and love that you kept in our hearts. Thank you for the privilege to worship you in spirit and in truth. Holy Spirit, be with us in the whole journey of our fellowship today. Father, let your will be done in each and every one. Father, we ask for your forgiveness, whatever we ask, we think, or we say that is not good in your sight. We thank you all for everything that we have, you have given us for the whole week, the guidance, the courage, and the privilege to worship you. Father, we live also in prayer all our brethren that is part in our gathering today, especially your servant that you are using to speak in your behalf. Father, cover him behind your back and let your will be done on him as he uttered all the best things that you have given from the book of life, from the word of yours. Father, thank you for his life that is using as a vessel to be part of this fellowship. Father, thank you for everything for today. We bring you back all the highest praise and adoration. In your mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Let the morning bring the word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go for you to entrust my life. Amen. So are you ready to entrust your life to our Lord God? Amen. Hallelujah. In you, the purpose of my life I discover who I am As your spirit touches mine Every step I take, every move I make You are by my side And I will be strong My strength is in you you want me to do yes i will go where you want me to go i will be who you want me to be anything for you when you ask me when you ask me i will go you show the way before me in your word i the truth you lead me on this journey every step i take every move i make you are by my side and i will be strong my strength is in you i will go where you want me to go i will do what you want me to 
you want me to do, yes, I will go Where you want me to go, I will be who you want me to be Anything for you Yes, Lord, anything for you, Lord Amen, those who trust in you you ever praising you will find our strength renewed I'm gonna make it happen those who trust in you ever praising you will find our strength renewed I'm gonna you want me to do yes i will go where you want me to go i will be who you want me to be yes i will go where you want me to go i will do what you want me to do yes i will go where you want me to go i will be who you want me to be anything for you Yes, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, oh God. Anything for you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Amen. Let's continue singing. Hallelujah. Enjoy the presence of our Lord God. Amen. music with the heavens we will sing 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 grateful that you hear us when we shout your name live high the name of jesus sing 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 and make music with the heavens we will sing 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 grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise live high the name of jesus what's not to love you what's not to love about you Heaven and earth adore you, yes, Lord. Kings and kingdoms bow down. Son of God, you are the one. You are the one we're living for. You are the When we shout your praise, live high, we will sing of Jesus. We will sing, 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 and make music with the heavens. We will sing, 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 grateful that you hear us. When we 
We will sing, sing, sing Woo! Grateful that you hear us When we shout your praise Live high the name of Jesus We will sing We will sing, sing, sing And make music with the heavens When we shout your praise, live high the name of Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah, Lord! Hallelujah! Praise us to your name, our Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Let's continue to worship our living God. Church, let us invite the Holy Spirit. We are here not just to sing. We are here to worship our living God. Hallelujah. Because we are made to worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for this day. Thank you. We are very blessed that we are here that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let us invite the Holy Spirit.
Lord. You deserve all the highest praises and worship, Jesus. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We worship you. We magnify your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A blessed afternoon, church. Welcome to the new season of the Lord Reigns in All Nation Ministry. If you are a member of a local church, thanks God for joining us today. If you are seeking for a local homeland church, we are happy that you are joining us today to discover how we are sealed, forgiven, chosen, blessed, and empowered in Christ. We are a full gospel church. We live the name of Jesus Christ. Lorean is not a religion, but a ministry that helps you deepen and grow your relationship with Jesus. For church announcement, join us in our weekly activities that flash on your screen. For special announcement, on next Friday, we will be having our Lord's Table and I would like to encourage everyone to prepare a piece of bread and a cup of juice. As we remembered our Lord Jesus Christ's sacrifice, who saved us from our spiritual death and delivered us from our spiritual bandage. Mark your calendar and save the day. This week is a great time to reach out to your friends neighbors and co-workers and invite them to join in our online fellowship with you over the next four weeks now is the time to be brave to ask to invite to extend an invitation and see what god does it is a blessing and a privilege to serve our living god for more updates follow us on our youtube channel and a facebook page like and share and tag your family, friends, and colleagues. Remember, spread the good news as our great commission. Be blessed and stay blessed. Thank you very much and enjoy this fellowship. It's giving time. Praise God. Get ready for what God has prepared for us about to witness, about to experience God's tremendous breakthrough in our lives. And as we continue to our tithes and offerings, let me share and read to you Luke chapter 6 verse 38. And it says, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Brothers and sisters, believe that you are not just being blessed, but you are called to be blessed. Amen? And within you, you will feel, you will experience that you will receive not just the blessing, not just an ordinary blessing from God, but an extraordinary blessing from God because you are called to be blessed. You see, what attracts the blessings of God is through our tithes and offerings, through our giving. He will not just bless us, but He will protect the source of our income. When we give our tithes and offerings to God, when we give to God, when we sow a seed unto God, we will experience His favor, we will experience His grace, we will experience reconciliation, we will experience forgiveness and we will experience protection so i encourage you brothers and sisters to cheerfully give our tithes and offerings to our god amen
Let's pray for our tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for you are the God who will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And thank you, O God, for you are the God of blessings. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you will continue, Lord, to bless the works of the hands, Lord, of those people you will use to handle those tithes and offerings. Give them, Lord, the wisdom that they will use it wisely and they will use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. And we also pray for those who gave their tithes and offerings that you will not just bless them, Lord, but let them experience, Lord, an extraordinary blessings from you. Father, we ask you that you will make us a good steward of our finances. Make us cheerful, make us faithful in our giving, our tithes and offerings. And we give you back all the highest praises and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Good afternoon, Church and brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, we are. Uh, I'm so blessed today uh, for um, giving. For God gave me another opportunity for ch uh, choosing me to to serve Him in this way, for uh, be being a channel of uh, blessing of His Word uh, to you, brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, we uh, we want to glorify Him alone, and may His name be glorified alone in today in the midst of us and as we continue to to welcome him let's uh, honor him and ask his presence through our prayer let us pray thank you lord for gathering us today in this afternoon oh lord thank you holy god holy mighty one we thank you for this day for allowing us to live another day so we can gather, O oh God, uh, on this place, O oh Lord, to, to worship you, O oh Lord, to, to know you more, O oh Lord. We are also thanking you, O oh God, uh, for our brothers, O oh God, who are not here, but uh, in tune, O oh God, in on by online service, O oh Lord. We are thanking you, O oh God, for this for this channel, O oh God. So we, even though we are limited, O oh God, to gather together, O oh Lord, because of this, the limitations of pandemic, O oh Lord, but you have a way, O oh Lord. You, you, you provide this way, O oh Lord, this online service, O oh God, so we can still um, connect to you, O oh God, connect with our uh, brothers and sisters, O oh God, even though they are not here physically, O oh Lord. Thank you so much, Jesus, for for this uh, for this uh, podium, O oh God, so we can worship you together in, in the midst of of, of this pandemic, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, and we are welcoming the presence of the Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, to guide us as we study your word. Please open our mind, O oh God, Please open our heart, O Lord, so we we can um, understand and we can um, uh, know, O Lord, the, the message that we are going to partake today. And let this message, O God, change our life, O Lord, as we study your word. And please, we are asking to uh, for, your, for your guidance, O Holy Spirit, O Lord, satisfy our thirst, O Lord. You, uh, we are asking you to satisfy our our hunger for your word, O God, and help us to know you more in a personal level, O God, as we study your message today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen and Amen. So once again, um, thank you for thank you, brethren, for for giving me opportunities to to deliver the the message for you today oh lord um so 
as we continue our um, topic today, uh, we are going to, to study about spiritual gift. So, but before we go on to our topic, let's review. We are, we're going to uh, review our, our lessons. Uh, maybe most of you have uh, simple gardening lessons in, during your elementary years or in your high school years or yeah. Um, maybe in, even in Philippines also, in Uganda, in Cameroon, maybe you have these uh, lessons also during your elementary years. So I, I, want, you, I, I want to review about the, the simple hand tools and the purpose of each tools because it, this will have an, a relation to our topic for today. So let's go back to our uh, lessons during those years. So, um, if you remember, uh, we have le like few, few gardening, simple gardening hand tools that we need to use for, for, for gardening. Um, one of those uh, tools is, is the, the rake, the hand rake. The hand rake, uh, if you know uh, what, what's the hand rake, you can see in this picture, this is used to turn the soil and remove the weeds and debris or to smoothen the soil. This is uh, usually used by us by during those years to loosen the soil, to make it like more, um, uh, more porous, to absorb more water and nutrients to, for the plants. And another tool is the hand pruner. The hand pruner is used uh, to cut the twigs that which are not necessary and also to make the, the, the plant more to grow more uh, like broader. So this, uh, this hand pruner is very useful in, in gardening. And next is the hori hori, but in the Philippines we call this uh, a bolo. It's like a knife, uh, a big knife, or yeah, used to cut twigs also. And, and this is like a multi-purpose tool. This is um, mainly used for cutting. So it's called hori hori. It's also to slice and chop weeds, dig out roots, plant seeds, during the harvest, um, it is being used to, uh, to, to cut like fruits and also some root, root crops also, again. And also the weeder. The weeder from itself, it's, it is being used for, uh, to help us to remove the un un unnecessary weeds in our garden. So it's like, it looks like a screwdriver but it's a weeder. So it will dig, dig deeper into the weeds. So you can remove the, the weeds. I remember if during my uh, young years, uh, if you will not remove the, the roots of the weeds, it will continue to grow quickly. So you have to dig it uh, deeper. So when, once you remove the, the weed, uh, it, it will remove also the roots of it. So this weeder is used to, to, do, do, to do those tasks. Then also the scissor. Scissor is also useful for many things. Just like if you need to cut something for, for snipping or cut some rope, this is very useful in simple gardening. And others is a bow rake. A bow rake also is used to gather like fallen leaves or um, like dry leaves or weeds. This is used to gather them. And if you're going to, to to burn the, those, uh, burn those uh, dried leaves. But nowadays, it's not allowed to burn anyway. They just uh, allow to do decompose it. So uh, you, you need to use the, the bow rake. You call that bow rake. So it also used to gather the, the soil. If you're making a, a garden bed, you need to use this tool to, to gather the loosened soil. The next one is the the round-headed shovel. So it's very important also. It is used to, to dig so soil or to get some soil or to pick up some soil to transfer it to another place. It's very useful and it's very common uh, all around the world. So it's called the round-headed shovel. The other one is the digging fork. It is used to loosening and turning uh, soil and other things. Uh, to, for lifting other things like weeds, dried weeds, or uh, to loosen the soil, it helps a lot. It's like a, a dining fork, but it's, it's bigger 
and it looked like dining fork but it's bigger and it's called digging digging fork so it's very useful also in in simple gardening so the next one is water host but during our elementary years we don't use this because we don't have like like a faucet during those time we just get water from from the creek or from the deep well so we usually use the bucket or the water bucket for 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 watering the, the plants so but uh, nowadays because um, it's more common that in our society there's already uh, a water line so uh, using water hose for gardening is very useful because you can water easily the the garden so the next one is the transplant speed transplanting yeah this is uh, from the name itself for usually used for transplanting the the seedlings because uh, it's very delicate the seedlings is very delicate once you transplanted it and you damage the root it will not grow and it will die down so so it's very it's very useful to use the uh, the transplant spade usually you dig deeper to to get the 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 what's this the seedling that you are going to transplant and uh, you will use this toy uh, this tool to transfer it to a better place a better place in your garden so the next one is the water wand so it serves also as like like those so like the bucket the water bucket to to pour the watering of the plants so you call this a water wand and also the digging bar the digging bar is all, all almost the same as the round-headed shovel but for the digging bar uh, you you can dig deeper into the soil to rem to uproot the weeds and to remove the unnecessary plants it, it will help to unnecessary shrubs it really helps uh, for the gardener this kind of tool so the next one is the the hatok used for chopping like branches twigs or bigger branches bigger plants or shrubs or the, or even maybe trunk of a necessary tree small trees so you can use this one and also the yeah as we discussed also already the, the pruner is very useful for for planting so these are the tools and there's a lot more uh, kind of tools so we don't have to to tackle each and every tools uh, on this but generally these are the basic tools we are use we we've been using uh, through uh, in gardening each tool has its own purpose and each has its own uses the reason why I want to review those kind of tools which we already uh, we studied long time before so that it will be refreshed in our mind the, the the important of each tools and the separation of the uses because it had it it was designed for a specific purpose if you use a certain tool for the wrong purpose you will not get the the outcome the the proper outcome so same as to our spiritual gift that we are going to tackle today it's very uh, important that we understand the the characteristic of a free spiritual gift and its uses so what are the spiritual gift so how it differs from with talent so there are called the spiritual gift and there are talents so some people they thought it's like the same but um, talent is different because talent it is a natural aptitude or skill meaning when you say aptitude an aptitude is a component of a competence to do a certain kind of work and at, at, at a certain level so when we you say it's an aptitude it is the ability of an individual to do a certain kind of work at a certain level so that's the talent it's a natural aptitude when you say natural meaning God already implanted each individual with the raw ingredients of talents and it was already imprinted in our DNA when you say DNA uh, in scientific term when you say DNA it's a deoxyribonucleic acid it is a component in our cell that contains uh, that contains an instruction during our uh, development stage in the womb of, when we are in still in the womb of our pe uh, mother it contains a, 
as an instruction of what will be the color of our skin, the color of our eyes, what will be our uh, the, 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 our complexion or the way we, we will grow if we are taller or shorter. And it also determines our characteristic because it's there in the DNA, in our DNA, uh, the, the instruction. It, um, we, that's the raw ingredients of our development. That's the, you call that DNA. So, every organism has its own DNA. Every living uh, organism, almost every living uh, organism has its own DNA in every cell in our body. So, in, it contains the code that gives each part of our body a distinct characteristic. It also contains instruction how each person will look like and how we will, we will act. It is a hidden instruction from our God when, we, when He created each one of us. A living proof that there is God and He created us unique because no two person has exactly the same DNA and has exact uh, the same DNA code. That is why we are unique to each and, to each and everyone. So that's why this, this explains how big, why we are unique. We have distinct characteristics. Even the twins have their own characteristic. No twins are exactly the same. Even their pink, uh, fingerprints. It was blueprinted in their DNA. Um, it started when they uh, it started when they are still in the womb of their mother. This is a proof that there is a God. Because without this instruction, if the DNA is ruptured or without a proper code. Uh, you will not be developed like this, like your hands will be uh, different. So it's a proof that there is a living God who instructed everything, who designed our life, how we, we will look like, how we, our characters, and that it's, it's, and also those inside the DNA is the instruction of how our talents be. So each and every one of us, each and every person has their own talents. So God already implanted those talents to each and every one, even when we were, are still in the womb of our mother. So it is not determined, the talent is not determined whether you will become a Christian or not. It's implanted in our DNA already. So everyone who is uh, born, uh, there's a hidden there's a hidden instruction in their body what will be their talent so um, that's why even non-believer has their own talent and this explains why um, there are millions of talented people or not if not millions billions maybe in the whole world they are so talented but they are glorifying their, their, themselves, not God. That's why even those who don't believe in God has their own talent. You can see this uh, in, in the music world. There's a lot of antichrist, but full of talent. But it's, it's a God-given talent, but sadly, it's controlled by their free will, whether to use it for the glory of God or for the glory of themselves. So talent, it's a natural that's how good our God is. He put, He has given each one of us a deposit, or in business, uh, in business term, a starting capital. So He can, we, so we can do our work in this natural world. You remember, if you remember the parable of the talent, each one has given a talent. On that term, the talent say means the measurement of potentials to work in the vineyard. So in that parable, that the measure, the talent means the measurement of the potential for each and every one God has given or entrusted to each one. So, and their master is expecting them a yield when he comes back. And, and each person was rewarded according and in proportion to the talent that the master has had uh, entrusted to them. So each one of of them, of, of each one of us has given a capacity to glorify God with our talents, the talents that we have. 
and it will be rewarded according to how we use it and in the pro in proportion to what we had given so if we receive one we will not be accounted for the 10 talents because we receive only one as the parable of talent shown um, but if we receive many in proportion to it we will be judged accordingly on the day of the harvest and the and when you say the day of harvest is the, in the on the judgment day but sadly again millions if not billions of people are just borrowing those potentials to their grave they bringing those talents to their grave and not consuming it for the purpose it was given to us to bring glory and to honor our creator so this is the sad thing that is happening in the whole world there are millions or billions of people are dying borrowing with them bringing with them their potentials to glorify god but they use it not to the purpose for what it was given so <clears throat> that that is why the, the 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 richest place on earth is the graveyard the richest place on earth is the cemetery those are the richest place on earth why because millions of uh, potentials was buried on that place wasted potentials to glorify supposed to be to glorify god and supposed to be those potentials will bring them to be richly rewarded in the judgment day in eternity but sadly it was not used according to its purpose so let us not be one of them and always remember all god has entrusted to us that our god has entrusted to us the ability and it will be counted on the day of judgment so let us find the real purpose of our life or of why we are created to temporarily live on this earth what is the purpose why we situate uh, temporarily situated on this earth what is the purpose of our life here on earth the limited life on earth and if you will see the bible you will see the summation of the, our purpose is to glorify and serve him so what's the difference of this in the speech of the talent in um, the spiritual gift so let's um, open our bible in first corinthians 12 1 to 11 and it says here now concerning spiritual gift brothers and sisters i do not want you to be unaware you know that when you were pagans you were led astray to the mute idols however you were led therefore i make known to you that no one speaking by the spirit of god says jesus is a curse and no one can say jesus is lord except by the holy spirit verse 4 now there are varieties of gift but the same spirit and there are varieties of ministries and the same lord there are varieties of effects but the same god who works all things in all persons but to each one is given the manifestation of the whole of the spirit for the common good verse 8 for to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit and to the to another the word of knowledge according to the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit and to another gift of healing by the one spirit and to another the effecting of miracles and to another prophecy and to another the distinguishing of spirits to another various kinds of tongues and to another the interpretation of tongues but one and the same spirit uh, works all these things distributing to each one individually just as he wills so it's a spiritual gift is different from talents talents as we discussed a while ago is a natural abilities 
But spiritual gifts are supernatural abilities. Talents are built uh, built into our DNA, while spiritual gifts are being received by our spirit from the Holy Spirit as He wills. And also, we can we can also desire. God allows us to desire uh, if we wanted to desire a specific uh, uh, um, kind of spiritual gift. We can desire and we can ask Him but according to His permissive will. So, talents are natural to all humans whether you are believers or not. But, spiritual gifts are given to those who are qualified and are ready and according to the Spirit's standards. Even to some who are already believers are not yet ready to receive the spiritual gift because they, are, they were just simply believe in Jesus Christ and were baptized in water but not yet baptized by the Holy Spirit. You can see this in the book of Acts um, 2, 1 to 4. And it says here, the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, a noise like violent rushing wind came from heaven, and it filled the whole house where they, are, they were sitting. And tongues that looked like fire appeared to them, distributing themselves, and a tongue rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with different tongues as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out. <clears throat> In Acts 8, 4 to 7 also, you can see, Therefore, those who had been scattered went through places preaching the word. And so this is after the, the Pentecost. So th those who, were, uh, who received the empowerment of the Holy Spirit uh, go through places and preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and began proclaiming the Christ to them. The crowds were paying attention with one mind to what was being said by Philip. As they heard the, and saw the signs which he was performing, for in the case of many who had unclean spirits, they were coming out of them, shouting with a loud voice, and many who had been paralyzed or limp on crutches were healed. So they are performing signs, wonders, and miracles after the Pentecost. So there was much rejoicing in that city. Now, a man named Simon had previously been practicing magic in the city and astonishing the people of Samaria, claiming to be someone great. And all the people from small to great were paying attention to him, saying, This man is the power of God, and that is called great. And they were paying attention to him because for a long time, he had astounded them with his magics, magic arts. But when they believed uh, Philip, as he was preaching the good news about the kingdom of God, and the name of Jesus Christ, uh, both uh, men, and men and women were being baptized. Now even Simon himself believed. I will repeat, now even Simon himself believed, and after being baptized, he continued on with Philip. He became a follower. He believed, he uh, was baptized, and he became a follower. And as he observed signs and great miracles taking place, he was repeatedly amazed. And you can see also in Acts 8, 4 to 7, uh, including uh, uh, the continuing verse, then with Pete, uh, following, he became a follower of Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they would receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had simply baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they began laying their hands on them, and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. So even they, they had already baptized uh, uh, through water, but they haven't received yet the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So even they believe already in Jesus Christ and they were baptized, but the Holy Spirit uh, has not come upon them. So um, in Acts chapter 8, 8, 18 to 21, it says, Now when Simon 
saw that the Spirit was given through the laying of the apostles on the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give this authority to me as well, so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could acquire the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this matter, for your heart is not right before God. So you can see in those verses that we read, it, you see the distinction between the talent and the spiritual gift. Talent is natural to our body. It was given by God. God is so gracious and so good that He implanted us with a capacity, with a potential to glorify Him. He didn't ask you first, uh, you will become a believer or not. He implanted everyone with a potential. But a spiritual gift is different. It will be given to those who are, who are hungry and to those who are ready and to those who are willing to serve God and according to the wills of the Holy Spirit and to, according to the standard of the Holy Spirit. So if, if you see Simon, Simon already believed Jesus Christ. He, he, he was baptized. But there in... His heart is a different, there's a different agenda, there's a different intention. And he thought he could receive those um, spiritual gifts by bribing, by giving his, uh, by exchanging his um, possession, uh, by, <clears throat> by paying for it. But uh, he was rebuked by Simon. So, you can see we cannot command God, we cannot command the Holy Spirit if we are not ready to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, what is the purpose of the gift of the Holy Spirit? Those are the tools which the Holy Spirit is giving to those who are willing and qualified to work in the vineyard of God. As you can see in Acts 8, 1-22. So, uh, those are the tools. In, in the book of Acts, after the Pentecost, you can see how they were uh, empowered. So, they, 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 were, they received the, the, the baptism, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, you cannot acquire it if you are not yet ready and qualified by the Holy Spirit. The purpose of this another one is it also empowers believers to witness for Christ. You can see that in Acts chapter 2, verse 4 to 13. And it says here, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with different tongues, as the Spirit was giving them the ability to speak out. Now there were Jews residing in Jerusalem, uh, dev devout men and uh, from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and they were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Why are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how it is that we each hear them in our own language, to which we were born, the Parthians, the Medes, the Elami, Elamites, and the residents of the Mesopotamia, the Judea, the Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, the Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya around the Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and the proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our language, in our tongues. Of the mighty deeds of God and they they all continued in amazement and great perplexity saying to one another what does this mean so after the Pentecost the, those um, those uh, disciples who are who were baptized by the Holy Spirit received this potential received the, they have even though they were not uh, educated, uh, some of them are fishermen. They don't have proper education. But after the Pentecost, they were empowered 
to speak to another language. That's, that's why they can reach out the different languages. They can reach out the language of the Arabs, the Cretans, the Romans, Sirens, and, and, they, and all the people hearing them were amazed because before they cannot speak those languages. So, so uh, please, but um, please take note, what happened in this um, in, in the day of Pentecost is different. The 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 ability for the their ability to speak to to another tongue to an, the term is to another tongue to various tongues or various languages is different from speaking to unknown tongues don't mix that up because some people are mixing what happened in the day of pentecost that they are uh, like speaking to unknown tongues so um what wa uh, what was uh, mentioned in the the chapter 2 of Acts, they can speak in other languages. That is uh, different from what wa was mentioned in, what is mentioned in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 4 to 5. And it, it says here in 1 Corinthians 14, 4 to 5, He that speaketh in a known tongue, the term is a known tongue, because in some other uh, versions, it's the same. They are using uh, tongues. But um, in, in King James Version, you can see that he that speaketh in a known tongue edified himself, but he that prophesied edified the church. I would that you all speak with tongues, but rather than you prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. So, in also, also it's mentioned in 1 Corinthians 14 to 39. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues. So, uh, uh, we, we do not forbid speaking in tongues, but it should be done in an orderly way. What, what uh, speaking in tongues uh, mentioned here is the speaking into unknown tongues. The, that unknown tongues, uh, uh, the believers are are uttering which uh, like you cannot understand because it's supposed to be uh, for it will be edify their themselves and be, it's between them and God it, it will not edify the church unless it will be um, translated to a common tongue it will be like interpreted so everyone uh, who is um, like speaking in tongue should it should be um, uh, translated or interpreted it should, uh, by prophesying so to in order for the church to be edified so this is different from the what happened in the chapter 2 of uh, of acts so don't mix this up otherwise you will be misled so uh, do not mix it together so what then is the purpose of the gift of the Holy Spirit those are the tools which the Holy Spirit is giving to those who are willing and qualified to work in the vineyard. It empowers believers to witness Christ, to witness for Christ. It also empowers believers to do signs, wonders, and miracles to glorify Christ. We can see in those succeeding um, chapters after the Pentecost that those believers who receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, they are empowered to continuously uh, perform miracles every day. They, they are uh, converting thousands of believers by performing signs, different signs, wonders, and miracles. So they were empowered. When they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when they received the gift of the Holy Spirit, they were empowered. So that's, those are the purpose. And another purpose is to empower the whole body of Christ, which is the church. The purpose why God is distributing the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit to His body, which is the church, in order for this body to move and function according to the instruction and according to the mind of Christ. Because Christ is the head of the church. So the mind is controlling the body. So each body has its own purpose. That's why um, the gift of the Holy Spirit was, is being distributed if you are a member of the body of Christ. And it should function as your body, as your, the mind commanded. Because he used the, the personification, the body. 
oh, every part of your body will not function if your brain will stop giving instruction to each and every cells in our body. So it will not function normally if this will function by itself. So the control of each and every part of our body is by our brain or mind. That's why if you um, suffered from stroke, the connection between your brain and that damaged part of your body is being cut. So it cannot receive any instruction. That's why you, even though uh, your mind uh, try to move your body, uh, try to move uh, uh, to your hands, you cannot move because it, the, the connection is uh, being cut by, by, by the, by, through that stroke you suffered. So it's very important that each and every instruction of your mind is well received by, by uh, each part of the body. Same thing, that's why the reason why God uses the personification, the, 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 the illustration of the body, because He wants to show us that the, each function, each um, spiritual gift should receive a specific instruction according to the mind of Christ, not according to their own. Otherwise, we will not uh, perform our own purpose, or, uh, the purpose of our gift we receive. So in 1 Corinthians 12, 27 to 31, it says, Now you are Christ's body and individually member of it, and God has appointed in the church first apostles, second the prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gift of healing, helps administration, various kinds of tongues. All are not apostles, are they? All are not prophets, are they? All are not teachers, are they? All are not workers of miracles, are they? All do not have gifts of healing, do they? All do not speak with tongues, do they? All do not interpret, do they? But earnestly desires the greater gift. And I, I show you a still more excellent way. So. There is, there, there's a warning about the spiritual gift. Number one, let us not be conceited if we receive the gift of the Spirit. And let us not be complacent to the attack of the enemy. It does not mean that we already have the gift of the Spirit that we will be immune or exempted to do wrong. Satan and the devils does not surrender so quickly. They will not surrender their purpose easily. They are determined to find a way to twist the gift that you have, that the gift or the tools that God entrusted to you. They, ha they will do, they, they're planning to twist that, that ability. And Instead of you becoming an asset to the church, if you becoming the, um, a, a help to the church, you will become an, a liability even though you still possess those tools, you still possess those gifts. They, they deceive people. Satan and the devils deceive people in order for them to be confused to how is the right use of the tools that they have by trying to pollute our personal desires. Personal desires is the enemy of spiritual anointing. That's why many people are anointed, but when, when it, it is mixed with their personal desires, that's the thing that, that they become a wanderer. So remember that even though we have the spiritual gift, we still have our free will. When we receive the spiritual gift, we still have the free will. And that may be contaminated with personal, our personal desires for personal gratification. That free will is being used or being attacked by Satan to, um, to what's this, to destroy or to pollute or to corrupt the gift that we have. The personal desire is being attacked. So we need to be vigilant to our desire so that we can use our gift that we receive from the Spirit to the, to the right purpose, how, why it's given to us. So the enemies are slowly developing impurities in our heart and bring it to fruition 
if we receive not care if we are not careful about the schemes and um, the and plans of Satan, it could ruin the real purpose of our spiritual gift. If you remember King Solomon, King Solomon has the gift of wisdom. He is so wise, and um, in in his young age, his wisdom is so great that everyone in his um, in his kingdom is uh, revering him. So he's that's why. Uh, he is the man of wisdom. He received the gift of wisdom from God. But many, for many times, he failed into right decision, making right decision. He, he's full of wisdom, but he failed to make a right decision. He, he failed into idolatry because of his wives. You can see that in 1 Kings 11 too. It is, and it says here, from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the sons of Israel, you shall not associate with them, nor shall they associate with you. For they will surely turn your heart away from after away after their gods. Solomon held fast to this in love. And this book of Kings says why he fails. It didn't happen happen so quickly. But it develops through time. Early in his kingdom, he does fair, fair, fairly well. At the beginning of his reign, he is said to have loved the Lord, walking in the statue of his father, King David. But there is a seed planted by the enemy, which, is, which started to grow. You can see this in the book of King, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3. And it says, Now Solomon, had, Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes of his father David, except he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. During those periods, Solomon loved the Lord. He's walking in the statutes, in the, in the ways of David, his father, in the examples uh, left by David. But except he sacrificed and burned incense, which God doesn't like. So you will notice in the in this verse we just we just read that though he loved God, but he started to worship in high places. In the history of Israel, for many times, God warned the Israel not to worship him in high places, just like the pagans are doing. But instead to meet him in the temple and the and one of the very the, the, the very king who built the temple of Yahweh, or of our God, is the King Solomon. He's the one who, who, who uh, built the temple, that is the temple of Solomon, the temple of our God. But, the, you know, the, the very first temple, he's the one who built it. But he and the Israelites still worship in high places like the Canaanites. They worship, worship their gods, Baal. Like the Kimos, uh, like other, other uh, what's this? The other countries who are uh, worshiping their god Kimos, like Molech, and all the, and all of his wives, his foreign wives are worshiping these gods. So his foreign uh, wives in has an influence to him, even though he still love God, but the, that influence is slowly growing into his life that influence from his, his foreign wives and it started with worshiping god uh, they he worshiped god in high places supposed to be he's worshiping god but the, the 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 way or the place is wrong according to to the will of it's not according to the will of god so in our lives in our practical lives uh, it, it also happened to us we thought that we are still on track with God, we are still um, serving God, but we are not careful on the specific instruction of God. So this is what happened to Solomon. Oh, even though he has the the gift of wisdom, so the worrying signs started when he marries the daughter of the Pharaoh. It started there. It, it didn't uh, develop quickly, so quickly. It started little bit by little. Um, Satan is very patient. He has still time to deceive many. That's why he's very uh, patient um, for all their schemes to us. So we should be, be vigilant 
to his schemes. So in 1 Kings 3.1, it says, Then Solomon formed a marriage alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her to the city of David until he had finished building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. And in Deuteronomy said, 17.17, 17, it says, He shall not multiply, multiply wives for himself, or else his heart will turn away. Nor shall he greatly increase silver and gold for himself. So this, this is the commandment of God. The, the leader of Israel, the king of Israel, or who should be the leader, should not multiply wives for himself, or else his heart will turn away from his God. Nor shall he greatly increase silver or gold. But, and you can see also in uh, 1 Kings 4.26 said, Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12 horsemen. 12,000 horsemen. This denotes Solomon have done in contradiction to what is said in Deuteronomy 17.16. And it says in Deuteronomy 17.16, Moreover, he shall not multiply horses for himself, nor shall he cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses, since the Lord has said, to you, you shall never again return this way. These are not necessary, necessarily sinful, multiplying horses. It's not necessarily sinful. But Deuteronomy warns such a large accumulation of horses will attempt Israel's king to trust in their own might rather than trusting the power of God to save people. So if you see, it's like whitewashing. You will not know. Even Solomon is full of wisdom, but he, he was attacked by enemy slowly into those kind of step-by-step -step method of whitewashing of the enemy. So we, we need to be careful in our life. And you will see later in his reign, in King Solomon's reign, we receive an extravagant wealth of Solomon's court. First King 10 uh, chapter 10, verse 14 to 29, narrated this. That includes exotic items imported from Egypt. He caused his people to return to Egypt to acquire all those wealth giving way to the entry point of Egypt's influence, again, to the Israelites and to his personal life. We are giving, in our practical life, we are giving an entry point to enemy to manipulate and pollute our desire. Slowly, like, you will... Solomon didn't notice it in the first place, but he becoming hooked to it and the influence. He, he opened the gate. He opened the entry point of Egypt's influence again to the Israelites. Then you will see in the chapter 11 of 1 Kings, it was narrated in chapter 11 of 1 Kings, it was narrated the downfall of King Solomon. King Solomon who had received the gift of wisdom. It's like contradicting. He has the wisdom, but he cannot decide rightful in the eyes of God. Why? Because he allowed an entry point on his life uh, to, for Satan to slowly, slowly um, implanting impurities on his desire, and it affects the gift that he has. So this is the way of Satan. He's, he's using our desire, personal desires, the, to pollute it, to put impurities, and it will affect our anointing. The way we use our gift will be affected by our free will or by our, by our own choice based on our personal desire, not based on, 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 on the Lord's instruction anymore. So be careful. Um, let us be careful. Not only you, but all, all of us. We need to be vigilant in our spiritual life. As we conclude um, our topic today, my brothers and sisters, let us go back to our elementary and high school lessons and review about the gardening tools. The reason why I, I share this um, these uh, lessons that we had before uh, during our elementary years it's because this kind of um, uh, illustration show is showing us that we are the workers on his vineyard we as believers as christians as servants of the, our lord we are considered as the workers 
in his vineyard. And our master, who is the owner of the vineyard, he entrusted us to manage and work to his vineyard until his return for the harvest. And each one of us, of us has given, those who are qualified, each one of them, of us, has given each, each tools to be used for His glory. If you are given a rake, for example, if we are using like uh, this uh, personification, I, I mean this uh, illustration, if you are given a rake, the, the, the rake that we discussed a while ago, and you will use it to prune the, 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 the shrub, what do you think will be the result? Or, if you are interested to use a shovel, and you use it to prune the necessary twigs, maybe you can do it for some time. But it will require you so much time and so tedious because it's not designed for that specific purpose. So, you, you need more time to do it. Or, if you're gonna use, um, like, if you're gonna use uh, a knife to cut, instead of an axe to cut uh, a bigger branches, it will take you more time. And the worst is, if you're gonna use a rake to, or, or uh, uh, if you're gonna use a water bucket or a hose to dig a soil, and that would be impossible, would you be able to achieve a good result? Many Christians are, are so focused on the tools that they have, and they want it to use to someone else's purpose, but forgetting the very essence of what his master will expect them to produce, to produce a harvest. Many of us, many of our uh, of Christians, they, we are so focused on our gift and forgetting the purpose why it was entrusted to us to produce a harvest. Do you think when the owner of the vineyard will return, will he look for the tools that you have? He will... Are, are he gonna ask you, where, where, where is the tools that I gave you? Uh, did you polish it? Did you, did you maintain it? Or will he expect a good result of the harvest that we are entrusted to work for? In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and 12, it talks about how blessed is the church of the Corinth because their, their members are, are full of different kind of gifts and they're full of um, spiritual gifts and well distributed to their members. But we reach, when we reach the chapter 13, they receive from Paul a loving rebuke. They receive a loving rebuke from Apostle Paul. They are full of gifts, but they lack and forgotten the most important thing that they need to possess. It's the love and the fruits of love. They are so focused on their gifts, not knowing the enemy is stealing the most important ingredients of their service to God, which is love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1-3 to says the excellence of love. If if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a clanging cymbals. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, they are so powerful, they can rem remove mountains from its place, but do not have love. I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to, to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. I remember uh, Pastor Jens um, preaching. He, he mentioned the verse in the Bible that when, when we, uh, we, we are in heaven, we will... The people are say, uh, to, uh, telling um, the the Lord, we have prophesied. We uh, we well, what's this? We prophesied. We uh, do signs, wonders, and miracles. We heal the crippled people. We do. We perform all the miracles. But 
when they received the the answer of the, the of the Lord, they receive, "I do not know you. Away from me, those who are evil doers." You, we can do our. We, I mean, when we receive gifts, we can do those things because it's built into that gift. It was designed like like the talent. They are they. God gave them the potential, the, but. If they use it for their own glory, they God will not re remove that potential. They can still do perform um, like bands. They will be famous, but they are not hitting. They are not achieving the pur for the real purpose why God gave that to them to glorify God. Same as in our spiritual gift, we can do the the function of its tools, but. Are we really glorifying God? Are we really hitting the heart of God? Are we really moving the heart of God by doing those um, the functions of God? Because if we put our desire on it, that's the liabilities starting. So, um, the excellence of love, let us not be conceited and boastful of whatever gift that we have or or what that we are about to receive but rather use it for its right purpose it is only a tool to help us and empower us to contribute to the work on the vineyard of our lord the things that will count when the lord of the harvest return are the harvest we should be working for to god alone be the glory so um uh, this is a two-part uh, sermon this is a two-part preaching because uh, the, the revelation is, is so, uh, so long that I cannot compress it into one uh, preaching alone. So um, the first part, uh, we will conclude into this. And on the second uh, part, which I will, be, uh, I will deliver on my next preaching, it's still, we will tackle about the, the spiritual gift, but we will tackle the characteristic the assets of each gift, each specific gift, and the liabilities that it may uh, become when, if Satan will be successful in our life to twist, to tweak the, the purpose of it. So we need to see what are the characteristics of each gift so we can uh, know at which stage we are in. If we are still uh, doing it, according to its purpose or we are turning it into liabilities if already satan is um, um uh, what's this if already satan turned it whitewash it into his purpose his own satan has its own purpose he will use our gift to for his own purpose that's why we need to be careful so we will tackle that uh, on my next preaching the assets and the liabilities of each gift so we, we 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 will become vigilant of our status in in the vineyard of of god so, um glory be to god for for the wonderful message of of our lord not all not only for you but also for all of us so that we will know him more um will in a personal way so and to our um, brothers or to the first comers and to our listeners who are in tune uh, to us today who are not yet or not yet assured of uh, what is status of their personal relationship to Christ if they already accepted Christ as their personal Savior or Lord and Savior I would like to share this message to you uh, for you today uh, so if you believe God, <clears throat> if someone believes God is real, then God and that God is also saying that hell is real. There are two places in eternity. Because it's a, it's a common thing that when, when a person died, they, their relatives will say, oh, they're, they're, he's already, or she, she's already in heaven. Like, like it's like, it's automatic that all people died automatically go to heaven. They are forgetting that there, there's two places in eternity. Heaven or hell. God has given us the free will 
to choose because he did not create us to be like a robot that follows only the like a computer he did not create us like a computer to follow each command when you press um, shut down it will shut down when you press type uh, like windows it will uh, uh, the window uh, will appear we are not like robot we have our own free will he created us he freed us but that's uh, that follows any instruction we have the free will to choose but God is so wise, He gave us free will so he, he would know who will be, who will love Him. That is the testing. Our free will, will, he, will he used the free will, He imparted us with free will so that He will know who will really love Him. Because we have the power, we have the option, we have the option to choose from. God cannot prove who will love Him or who will deny Him if we don't have the free will. That is why millions of people nowadays are denying the existence of God. They have the power to deny Christ. They, have, uh, they can deny Christ. People are mocking Christ. They have the option not to believe in Christ or not even uh, not to believe in the existence of God. That's why many people are nowadays going to far-flung places like uh, they want to go to Mars to prove something life there so that they disqualify the creation of God on Earth. Because they want to prove that all, all life will be created by from nothing to something due to the collision of uh, uh, like, uh, like atomic substances. They, don't, they, they disqualify the existence of God. They can do that because they have the free will. You can be one of them. You have the power to do that. But you also have the power to choose life. I cannot get the proof from my pocket to convince you that uh, or to show you the evidence that God will exist. And God doesn't want to do that also. Otherwise, He will come, He will appear on the midst of us to just prove that He's existing. I cannot do that. I, have the, I don't have the physical evidence on my pocket to show you that etern, eternal life is real. To show in your face, on, in, in your behalf, that eternal life is, is real. All we have, we have now is our faith. I cannot convince you with that. I want to lay down two options in a practical sense for you to choose from. The first option is, I can believe that there is no God and that there is no heaven and hell and that there is no eternal life when we die I can believe that I have the option to do that I have the free will to do that if I will choose this option I am free to do whatever satisfies me I will be free from bandages of doing a right thing no fear to do wrong or no one will force me to do right. I could live my life to the fullest. YOLO, you'll only live once. I, can, I have the, that option. But the second option is, I could decide to believe the existence of God. And He died for us to save us from the fire of hell. Even though I do not see Him. If I believe God, I need to spend my life here on earth getting to know Him more. So I could love him the way he wanted to be, on his way. It may sound limiting my life on earth to follow his will instead of mine, but it's worth it when we speak of eternity. What is life on earth compared to eternity if we will uh, choose the wrong choice? So there are, I will lay down two scenarios that may happen. The first option, you may have... You may believe in true, in truth, you can live your life, um, you can live your life without God. But what if there is God and there is judgment? You will only know this, you will only know the answers to this question. I mean, the, in, in, in visually, uh, in physically, you will 100% um, know and uh, prove this during the point of no return when we die on earth we will get that answer is really god i i want to i want to 
uh, I want to see God before I believe. But if you will wait for that moment, it's a point of no return. You will only know that when we die. And there's, you cannot ask for a single minute to, Lord, I thought you're not true, but you're, exi you're really existing. Just give me one more minute. Just give me one second. Bring ba me back to my, my earthly bodies. And I, because we can only accept him as our Lord and Savior in our, uh, when we still on our earthly bodies. We cannot ask him in, on that moment. Lord, give me one more, one minute. I will believe na. When we die, it's a point of no return. The second scenario is, you can say that there is no God. And if I, maybe, uh, and if I will live my belief that there is God, and at the end of my life, let's say, at the end of my life, what I believe is not true. Uh, there's no God. There's no eternity there's no life after death you you will laugh up you will laugh at me maybe because i wasted my my entire lifetime on earth i uh, sana uh, um sana um uh, kinonsume ko yun para satisfy to gratify my myself to to live my life to the fullest without any consideration of doing right things or or more just to enjoy myself uh, May, maybe sasabihin mo, lugi ako. Anyway, on that uh, point of time, in the, in, the, in the point of no return, I am no longer existing. If, if that's true, that there's no life after that. I'm, I'm, not, I'm no longer existing. Yes, you can say that my life on earth is wasted because I should live it to the fullest. But for me, even to that point, it's still not wasted because the life believing in Christ is full of joy and true freedom. So much greater is the loss and the suffering if you live your life without Christ and believing that He is not existing. So much greater is the loss, will be the loss for you. So much greater will be this suffering for you for eternity compared to your life suffering here on earth. So much greater will be the suffering in hell if you waste your life and you wasted your life against His will and denied His offer of salvation. By his, if you denied that offer, that, that free gift of salvation, if you d denied that and it, you, you ca came into point of no return, that you realize that God is real that heaven is real, that you cannot give another chance. God is giving us multiple chances while we are still on the body. But this is our only chance. This is our only gateway to heaven while we were still on earth. So don't waste any moment to deny Christ. And surely, when you allow Him to to enter into your life enter into your to your heart he will prove that he really exists in a most personal way that's why I, I told you i cannot prove you by picking him into my pocket but my life can testify and my based on my personal experiences based on my personal knowing of him I am assured that he is existing. So um, allow me to, to lead if you want to decide to accept him. Allow me to lead um, and if you want to decide to try to know him and decide to believe in him, please follow me on this prayer of acceptance. Lord Jesus, please enlighten me with your truth. Please Come and reveal yourself to me in most personal way. Help me believe that you are the truth. And today, as my first step of my intention to know you, I open my heart so you could come in. I ask you to come inside of me and help me encounter you personally. 
I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior. And beginning today, may your spirit guide me through the days of my life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and I pray, please help me to know you more. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. Let's pray for the closing prayer. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this day, O God, that you guided us, O Lord, as we study your word, O Lord. Let, um, please, O God, uh, let this word become a rema in our hearts, O God. Not just the, the, the words that we hear, but um, reveal unto us the personal message of, it, of this, uh, the personal revelation, O Lord, the personal meaning, O God, on the specific needs of our life, O Lord. Uh, you talk to us in a personal way, O Lord, and we ask your help to guide us as we want to know you more deeper and deeper each day. We want to glorify you, we glorify you, we honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen and amen. Glory be to God alone. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, thank you for the time we have spent in this place. We have sung, we prayed, and listened to the word. Lord, we don't take this service for granted. Because we know that believers in some parts of the world are being persecuted right now. Lord, thank you for being with us. Thank you for our church and thank you for the leaders you've given us. Lord, thank you for allowing us to come to this place to feed on your word. Let grace and peace be upon in our lives even as we depart from different destination. We have had a wonderful time. Lord, help us to keep your word in our hearts that we may not sin against you. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. So please raise your hands for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless you and your family. God bless the works of your hands. God bless your companies and businesses. You may go forth and bring the good news to many and make disciples in all nations. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Shalom. And make music with the heavens We will sing, sing, sing Grateful that you hear us when we shout